what is the language of art? That is the question. I think personally that every art has its own language. That of painting is the moment. Neither music nor literature are able, like painting, to capture the meaning of life and perpetrated it in the tiny molecule of plastic matter. When the painter observes the surrounding reality, a life of mutant, and transfer it to the canvas, he has the possibility to apprehend and translate to our senses what otherwise be an evanescent illusion. Poetry is perhaps the alter possibility of grasping perpetual or vanishing instances, but it can do so only with words. For people of little faith, painting allows us to see and sometimes to touch the plastic and tangible expression of life. Just as in literature, there are writers such as uh, Alfonso Reyes, Octavio Paz, Garcia Marquez, and Vargas Llosa, to refer only to some of them in Latin America, who have dominated all forms of writing, novel, theaters, poetry, essay, critics. In painting, there are also privileged spirits capable of exploring all spheres of all of their art. Guayasamin is one of them. His art extends and shines in the diverse expressive rivers of his artistic genius. He mastered, among others, drawing, canvas, cellographs, lithographs, engravings, and mural art. Through all of them, he exerted a rebellious and frontal influence in social criticism. He traveled through America in search of his own identity, reflecting in the serious crime road his aesthetic vision of the peoples of our country. Shocked by social injustice and the prejudice of the 20th century from dictatorships to violence against women, he began to paint the Age of Ira, exhibited in several museums around the world. There are 130 paintings in a series that the maestro never wanted to close. Violet, he said, never ends. In the plenary hall of the Ecuadorian National Assembly, the immense mural of the homeland gathers his vision of our history and his own political position. All his work, in fact, is an artistic compendium against social injustice and the abuses of power. His shout was immense and still resonates, loud and clear, in museums, agoras, murals, and places, but above all, in the hearts of men. The work of this famous Ecuadorian artist won several awards and recognitions, among others, the first prize of the Sao Paulo Biennial. Later, he was invited by New York City for a joint exhibition with Mexican muralists Rivera and Orozco. In 1994, he received the UNESCO Defense of Human Rights Award. And in 1999, he was declared painter of Ibero-America by the Ninth Ibero-American Summit of Heads of State and Government. His aesthetic conveys strength and endurance. His deep knowledge of human nature is expressed in his celebrated portraits. 
He painted dozens of personalities. Benjamin Carrió, Fidel Castro, Pablo Neruda, Gabriela Mistral, Atahualpa Yupanqui, Mercedes Sosa, and Paco de Lucia, among others. Now, during the time she lived, literature and art in Ecuador were dominated by social realism, a rebel confrontative posture. In literature, the shout and roll described in Huasipungo, the worldwide famous novel by the Ecuadorian writer Jorge Casas, resound along the blasts of the patronos and slashes in the haciendas. Young writers grouped themselves under the name of head producers, or satsikos, a word taken from Amazon tribe who used to perform a secret ritual in which they shrink their enemy heads. Guayas Amin assumed his own fight in the field of art. He did not have to look too far to express his protest and anger. He had no discrimination, abuse, hunger, and pain. Misery. Through his art, he spoke for the oppressed of the world. And at the end of his life, loyal to his pristine indigenous origin, he wanted his ashes to rest in the dark uterus of a clay pot in the chapel of man, an issue that he built throughout his full life. With these very brief reflections, which conveys, I hope, the significance of this event framed in the celebration of our national day, I wish to express my gratitude to my distinguished friend, Ignacio de Peró, for his introductory remarks and for opening the doors of the Cervantes Institute for this act that renews the deep ties that unite Latin American countries through our language, art, and culture.